Today we're doing our main introduction on volcanoes. So we're going to try to get all this introduction vocabulary stuff done so that we can actually get on to the different types of volcanoes. So we're starting at the very beginning with what is a volcano? A volcano is just an opening in the crust through which lava and or pyroclastics erupt. Now you might not know the word pyroclastics or tephra yet. Um, we'll talk about that you know, a little bit later in the year. Basically, think of pyroclastics or tephra as things like ash, okay, solid things, where lava is liquid, molten rock, pyroclastics are the ash. So, volcano erupts, it might have lava coming out, it might have just ash and stuff spinning out. So that's kind of your basic definition. I didn't put a blank on your note sheet for the difference between magma and lava, because I figured you knew it already. Uh, I did put this picture up here just in case if you've forgotten. Magma is just the molten rock underneath the ground. Then once it gets to the surface, it becomes lava. So lava is the molten rock above ground. The question I have on your note sheet is this one. Why does magma become lava? We know the difference, but why does magma become lava? We take a look at this picture, we can see the main reason. And we start at the bottom here. This is basically what we learned in our plate tectonics unit. We had this subduction zone. The plate is melting as it gets to the asthenosphere. It's really hot down there. As the lava, or as the rock melts, it turns into magma because of the intense heat and pressure. The magma is less dense than the surrounding rock, so it's going to rise up. Okay, so you see in this picture, the magma is rising up because it's less dense than the surrounding rock. Then finally, when it breaks through the surface, it's going to become lava. Okay, so did you get that? Maybe not. Let me repeat it one last time. The rock is going to turn into magma in the asthenosphere because of the intense heat and pressure. The magma is less dense than the surrounding rock, so it rises up to the surface, and when it breaks through the crust, it becomes lava. So that's why magma becomes lava. Now we're going to start talking about this magma and lava, specifically. And we're talking about the gases in them. As you probably know, there's lots of gases in lava. If you've ever seen a volcano, you see lots of gas coming out. Well, what is most of that gas? Most of the gas that comes out is just simply water vapor, H2O. Okay, it's steam. So you look at these guys here, and you think, oh my god, they're on the volcano, there's tons of gas around, they're going to die. No, probably not. Most of the gas is actually just water vapor. What are some of the other gases? Carbon dioxide, so CO2, that's a very common gas that comes out of volcanoes and comes out of lava. Another one is SO2, sulfur dioxide. If you've ever been near a volcano or Yellowstone, a place that has volcanic activity, you might kind of think of that rotten egg sm smell. There's lots of sulfur dioxide, and then also sometimes um, H2SO4, some sulfuric acid, that's going to come out also. So lots of sulfur in that. The amount of gas dissolved in the magma or lava is going to determine the type of the eruption. As the magma rises to the surface, there's less pressure. So the gases in the magma expand and try to escape from the lava. That should say lava. That causes the eruption. If they can easily escape, it's going to be a quiet eruption. If they get trapped, it'll be a violent eruption. Okay, so it's a lot to write down in that blank. But if you think about it, it should make sense. We had, let's say if we have the ground here, we have our magma chamber down here. As the magma rises to the surface, there's less weight from rocks above it. So there's going to be less pressure. So as the magma rises, there's less pressure on it. As it rises, then the gases are going to expand. and They're going to try to escape. So if the magma is up here now, those gases, there's less pressure. The gases are going to expand, and they are going to try to escape from that lava. If they can escape easily, then the lava is just going to bubble out and be a quiet eruption. If they can't escape easily, they get trapped, then you're going to have a big explosion. 
a violent eruption. So what we're going to need to look at next is what might keep the gases trapped in and lead to a big explosion, or what might let the gases just flow out easily and lead to a quiet eruption. And that's what scientists look at, because they want to know is that volcano is going to erupt violently, or is the lava just going to spill out on the surface. It's very important for what they do to prepare people. So we need to talk about viscosity. Viscosity is a word that you might know. It's just a fluid's resistance to flow. Okay, a fluid's resistance to flow. So if something is high viscosity, does it flow easily or not flow easily? If viscosity is resistance to flow, then high viscosity means it doesn't flow easily. An example of something that doesn't flow easily, maybe something like peanut butter, silly putty, something really, really thick. Something that's low viscosity is something that flows easily. Water is a good example, something that flows easily, very low viscosity. Something like honey in this picture, maybe it's more like a medium viscosity. It flows, but not as easily as water, certainly. So we're going to be talking about different viscosities with lava. If it's something that's low, it's a, if it's lava that's low viscosity, then the, the gas is going to be able to escape easily, and it's not going to build up pressure to cause the violent eruption. If the gases get trapped in the lava, if it's high viscosity, then it's going to be a violent eruption. So we see a couple pictures of lava here. This one over here on the left, that one is called Pahoyhoy. P-A-H-O-E. Oh, H-O-E. Pahoy hoi. This one over here is called a ah. We'll talk about the names of them, what they mean, pahoy hoi and a ah, a little bit um, later when we get to our, our quiet eruptions. We'll talk about Hawaii. Both of these types of lava are considered to be low viscosity. Which one do you think is higher? This one, the AA, ah -ah is slightly higher viscosity because it's slightly cooler. The Pahoy Hoy is slightly lower viscosity because it's a little bit hotter. The composition is pretty much the same between them. I don't have a picture of high viscosity lava because you don't usually have pictures of high viscosity lava. It's going to be down inside the volcano and then it's going to explode. So we're not going to see the lava. So if you see lava running out of a volcano, it's low viscosity lava. So a fluid's viscosity is going to depend on two things. It's mineral composition and it's temperature. We looked at between these two things. This one was a little bit cooler, so it was a little bit higher viscosity. This one was a little bit warmer, so a little bit lower viscosity. They both had the same mineral composition. You see the color of the rock is basically the same. It's black. They have the same mineral composition. So the only difference between these two for viscosity was the temperature. Okay, so the viscosity depends on mineral composition and temperature. Now, let's talk about this lava specifically so we can get to whether it's going to be a quad eruption or a violent one. There are two main types of magma or lava, mafic and felsic. So Mafic and Felsic. Hopefully you talked about these last year, so you know a little bit about the differences between Mafic and Felsic. Um, they're both igneous rocks, obviously. They're coming out of volcanoes. And if you remember your identification chart, we have the Felsic ones on this side. The Felsic ones are going to be lighter in color, lower density, and they're going to be rich in silicates, okay, silicon or silicates, um, and aluminum. The, the mafic ones are over here. They're darker in color, they're higher density, and they are not rich in silicates. They're going to be rich in iron and magnesium. And when we're talking about lava, we're of course talking about the extrusive ones. Or again, hopefully last year you learned about aphanitic. If I can try to spell it here. Okay, these ones were aphanitic, the extrusive, small crystals. Some of them were even glassy. You see the texture here. Um, glassy, vesicular, um, basically aphanitic. The intrusive ones, hopefully remember that also, 
those ones are the phaneritic. So that spells, that's supposed to say phaneritic. Okay. Phaneritic are the larger crystals, the intrusive ones. These ones cool slowly, so they have big crystals. The aphanitic, extrusive ones, they cool quickly, so they have small crystals or maybe no crystals at all if they're the glassy ones. So this is kind of this difference now. So we look at some of the characteristics of that specifically as we've seen here. Mafic characteristics. It's going to be low in silica or low silicate content. Because of that, it's going to be more low viscosity. It's going to be runny. What color is it going to be? Well, it's going to be dark colored. Why is it dark colored? Because it's rich in iron and magnesium. So a great example of a rock that would form from mafic lava is basalt. You see it out here, extrusive basalt. And here's a picture of basalt, okay, that black rock, again, that you should remember from last year. If it's low viscosity, are the gases going to be trapped, or are they going to escape easily? Well, they're going to escape easily because it's low viscosity. The gas can just bubble right out of it. It's not going to build up pressure, so there's not going to be a violent eruption. So we're going to call that a quiet eruption. And we'll show you lots of videos and pictures of quiet eruptions. The felsic characteristics are you know, basically the opposite, so I didn't write them down here. You can fill them out yourself. Felsic ones are going to be high in silica. Okay, so high in silica or silicates. They're going to be high viscosity, which means they're kind of thick. They're going to be light colored. So the main rock that's going to form from the lava is going to be this one, rhyolite. Here you see a picture of rhyolite, aphanitic, light colored. The gases are going to be trapped in this. Because it's high viscosity, the gases are trapped. The pressure is going to build and build and build and build and build until the rock can't handle it anymore, and it's going to break and cause a violent eruption. Okay, The gases get trapped, the pressure builds until it can't handle the pressure, and it explodes in a violent eruption. That's really it for those. There's kind of some other things. You know, We're going to talk about a little bit more in class, and I'll show you some ash from Mount St. Helens. It's kind of neat to look at Mount St. Helens, one of the most violent eruptions we've had in the United States, um, at least kind of recently. Um, so I have some ash from that, and I'll show you. Uh, it's obviously going to be very felsic, because it was a violent eruption. Think of the names. We'll show you basalt, too, again, so you can compare the difference. Think of the names, mafic and felsic. Well, why do they have these weird names? Think of the MA. That's for the magnesium. The fic okay, is iron. Okay. So magnesium and iron, then felsic. Okay, well, what does that stand for? Okay, basically silica. And what is one of the main silicate rocks? Okay, hope you remember that. Uh, or silicate minerals, I should say, uh, feldspars. So that's where we get the felsic from. Feldspars and silica, and then we have magnesium and iron. Kind of where the where the names come from. If you think of the names, you'll remember the high silica, low silica. High viscosity, low viscosity, dark colored, light colored, gases trapped, gases escape, quiet eruptions, violent eruptions. Okay, you can kind of put it all together with that. That's it for our main introduction.